Welcome, this is John Lundquist from Paladin Academy, and this is Lesson 2-5, Algebra 2, Solving Radical Equations. So, let's just talk a little bit about square. The, the two things that go together are squares, like squares of numbers and radicals, because they kind of go together. And the um, one undoes the other one. Either way, they undo each other. So let me talk about that. So perfect squares are numbers, are the you know the whole numbers that are squared. And you know we mean squared. I say x squared. Ugh, what happened? I said x squared. That's x times x, right? or n squared is n times n or you know 2 squared is equal to 2 times 2 which is 4 and we call 4 a perfect square 3 times 3 is 9 we call 9 a perfect square and that's because it's the, the, the product of two of the same whole numbers and so perfect squares take on throughout history of mankind and start with the Babylonians. They, they always thought of there was something special about squares. So one here you know, I have perfect squares here. So you have a one by one square. You know, we call this a we call it a square unit, and we measure things in squares. So we we measure, you know, square feet square yards, um, square miles, um, you know, if you have um, a square, uh, let me, let me, I can just take a square here, we have a square, pretty close to a square, um, we, you know, we could label it a mile, we can label it whatever we wanted to, um, but um, it's because it's, it's because I have maybe this is two miles by two miles. So we, you know, the area is two by two, two times two. And if this was, let's say this is feet, two feet by two feet, that would be four square feet. Sometimes we do this square feet, we go four feet to the second power, um, four feet squared, um, you know, this would be two and two. Um, it could be miles, square miles, whatever. And then, you know, if you had three, three by three is the same thing. Okay, so um, we have one, so a one square thing is one and then two by two is four, three by three is nine, uh, four squared is sixteen, four by four if you count the squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight, you know, you get sixteen, five by five is twenty-five squares, five on each side, total of twenty-five squares, and that's why we call it a square, twenty-five square something feet, yards, or units. You could just say 25 square units, too. And we didn't want to specify exactly. And then, of course, early on in mathematics, way back, Babylonians, Egyptians, wanted to find how to take and find out what two numbers make a number if you multiply them together. And so they came up with what we call square roots, and that would be, and, and this symbol um, had a big, long revolution, uh, evolution. And it started out with a radical, it started with an R, and then an R with a line through it or something, or an X. And then they took out the R, and they, then they made it just a V like that, or like this. And then Rene Descartes added a line over it. And 
and they call it a square root symbol or a radical symbol. That's why they had the R. Um, and that pretty much established it after Descartes. And he, Rene Descartes is famous for the saying, I think, therefore I am. There's a philosopher, you know, back then they were kind of like all around geniuses. They dabbled in philosophy, mathematics, science art, literature, they were, they were renaissance guys and they, they did more than just one thing. Like nowadays, a scientist pretty much does one thing. Um, anyway, Descartes is famous for also the Cartesian coordinate system which we named after him, which is the XY graph. You can thank Rene Descartes for that. You uh, if you don't like drawing a line on a XY coordinate system and all that stuff. Okay, so taking up a lot of time on this, but so I, if you wanted to, then let's say take four. Well, you know, this is not even take four, let's take X maybe. If I, if I took x and I squared it, you know, and I wanted to find, I wanted to get a way to get x without, you know, algebraically, I square root it because this because notice that if I take let's take four for instance, this the square of four, the square of two squared is four, I square root four, I get two. It undoes the it undoes the square. And the same holds true for a square root. If I take the square root of 2 and I square it, it does the same thing. Because I get the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 by definition of square root is the number that you multiply by itself to get another un number underneath. So that would be 2. And the square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. Or you could say the square cancels out the square root. Um, uh, so like 4, the square root of 4 up here, the square root of 4 is 2. And I could say, I could also say the square root of 4, but 4 is really 2 squared, right? 4 is 2 squared, 4 is 2 squared, so it cancels, the, the square root cancels, you get 2. So that's what we're going to use to solve these equations, that little trick, that trick of the trade, they say. That's what, what it is. So quickly, what I'm going to do to solve radical equations is I square both sides. And that cancels that out, and I get 2x equals... 64. Divide by 2, and I get x is equal to 32. Bing. Done. Now, here I have, I have, before I square, I have to get rid of this. And this is a negative 10 times. If there's nothing in here, we assume a multiply. So I'm going to divide by negative 10, and I get the square root of n minus 10 equals 6. Because negative 60 divided by negative 10 is positive 6. Square both sides. This cancels. N minus 10. I get what's underneath. That's the trick. It's the big trick. Equals 36. Add 10 to both sides. And I get N equals 46. Okay. This is even simpler. I square both sides. This, the radicals go away completely, and I get 12 minus m equals m over 5. So I'm going to multiply. Uh, and then this, this is another trick. Let me get, let me make that 12 better. Uh, 12. 12. Okay. Get rid of a fraction. Well, I could, you know, add, you know, well, you know bring the m over here and then add 
Now I have to make the M five fifths M and stuff. But the best way to do it is just multiply everything by five. If I do that, I cancel out the five. It's kind of another trick of math. Get rid of the number on the bottom. It's always nice, and they, the fives cancel. So they get. I have to distribute the five, of course, to this, and I get sixty minus five m equals m. So then I add five m to both sides to cancel that guy out, and I get sixty equals six m. Divide by six, and I get m equals ten. Six goes into sixty ten times. Really easy. Okay, I'm running out of time. Nine is twelve minus twelve. Twelve. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get the square root of eight n plus sixteen equals um, twenty minus twelve is eight. Square both sides. <clears throat> Cancel out the radical. Eight n plus sixteen equals sixty four. I'm going to minus 16. I'm going to kill some of this off so I can write over here. So I get minus 16. I get 8n on this side. 8n. 8n. That cancels. Equals uh, 5. 6 from 14 is 8. 1 from 5 is 4. Divided by 8, divided by 8, I get n equals 6, because 6 times 8 is 48. And that's how you do them. That should be, I think that that's all the, the different forms that you're going to see on this worksheet. So good luck.